Hey guys, if you're interested in an easy, effective chase cam that can be used for paramotoring or paragliding, stick around. I'm going to show you how you can use a simple 3D printer and some basic supplies to build an awesome chase cam. In this video, I'll be using an Ender 3. This has been slightly modified, but as long as you have a 3D printer that can print fairly well, I think you'll be doing just fine. A huge thank you to Barry B. Good over on Tinkercad for putting together the plans that I'm using in today's video. I will include a link in the description uh, so you can go over and check out Barry's files. Uh, Barry's got some good details on his print, although he recommends a different filament in PLA Plus here, uh, which seems to work fairly good. You can see that. Um, it's a little flexible uh, and actually I took it one step further and I tried to bend it just a little bit just to see how strong it was and I bent it pretty far and it didn't break so I think using PLA plus is gonna work just fine now that I know it's going to print fine I'm going back to Cura to add some additional leaves that way we can print multiples at one time Want to pick up some uh, utility rope. I got some 1 16th inch here, a little metal clasp to connect to your wing. And then we're going to want some shrink tube, some elastic shock cord. I'll put a link in the description, a um, tent rope tie, some smaller elastic cord, a knife and a lighter. Oh, I almost forgot. You're also going to need a small little barrel swivel. Don't forget to melt the end. We're gonna pinch that off a little bit just to keep it from fraying. We're gonna get that tent stake rope tie out. We're gonna push it up through the bottom. Then we're gonna go back through the middle, down through the top. There you see that. And then we can go ahead and pull a little bit of slack through, give us a little bit of line to work with. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and take that uh, little silver clip and slide it through the end of our line. Go ahead and just let that down to the bottom. And then we're gonna take that line and go up through the bottom from the same direction we came out. And then we're just gonna tie a little half hitch there and uh, make sure that uh, once you get that tied, go ahead and cinch it up nice and tight. And you can see that's not going anywhere. And again, this is the end that we're going to tie to our uh, wing. Uh, don't forget to put your shrink tube on now. We don't want to forget that. And you can just slide that down to the bottom and make sure it's out of the way. All right, we're going to take a nice bite of cord here. Uh, probably about uh, 12 to 16 inches and then uh, we're just going to make a figure eight uh, knot we're just kind of twist it from the bottom under and then down through the top through the hole you can see here uh, it's a real clean knot and then in order to get that swivel on there we're going to do a little trick and i'm just going to show you we're going to pull that loose end uh, back through the knot and don't worry too much about where it went uh, i'll show you a neat little trick here once we get our swivel on. So go ahead and pull that all the way through. Don't worry about where it came from. And then we're gonna take the end and go ahead and slide your swivel on. All right, now all we gotta do is follow that other line all the way through, matching exactly where it's going. And you can see here, I keep it nice and tight. It's just following that other cord all the way around. And then we see it goes through the middle. So we're gonna take the end and push it through the middle. And there we go, we have our completed knot. And then all we have to do is uh, push it down to the end and cinch it up real tight. You are gonna to wanna to make sure that you pull this knot uh, pretty tight. That way you can get the shrink tube over the top of it. Uh, if you find yourself having a hard time getting the shrink tube over it, you may just need to tighten it up a little bit more. 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the end of this off, just trim it up a little bit. That way I don't have any sticking out of the bottom of the shrimp tube. And again, don't forget to burn that end off and make sure we don't have any fraying line. Now we can take our shrink tube, pull it up. We're gonna go ahead and slip it all the way over the end and pull it up to a knot. I find it's easiest if you grab the end of the cord and then just kind of pull the knot into the shrink tube. And then uh, you can make sure you have it snugged up right to the end, maybe a little bit past the end just so that cord doesn't fray at all. Now we're going to take our lighter, put some flame to it. Be real careful here not to burn the shot cord. We don't want to melt that. And there you have it. And um, make sure you do a nice tug on it. And again, this is the side that goes to the chase cam itself. Our parts should be done printing. And we're just gonna go ahead and pull those off. I will say that it does seem to be a lot stronger when you print them flat. You're going to need eight of these. Set the tab straight up. Go ahead and hook that over. Put the next one in place and then put the little tabs together. And that should be complete. Now we wanna connect that thin elastic cord that we have. We're just gonna tie a little half hitch in it. Make sure that you find the center of your camera mount. We're gonna mount it on the bottom side, halfway from one side to the other. Starting from the inside, you're gonna thread it all the way out and then all the way across to get to the other side. Threading it one last time into the center and then uh, we're just gonna put a half hitch there. And then uh, once we get that kind of loosely tied, we can then reach around to the inside, make sure we snug it up, go ahead and cut that off, and then we can burn the end so it doesn't fray. At this point, we're going to add our 1 16th diameter utility line. We're gonna start by threading it through the camera mount, and then put the two ends together and just pull it all the way to you have it centered on the camera mount. And go through our barrel swivel on the end of our line. We just split those two and then going from halfway around you're just going to feed it to the inside put a little half hitch in it so it doesn't pull through that little circle that we fit it through and then repeat the same thing on the other side. And there you have it. Next, we're gonna pull it straight and make sure that barrel swivel is centered in the middle. This way our camera flies straight up and down. And then the final thing we're gonna do is add a zip tie, that way that uh, utility rope can't slide. We can go ahead and add our camera. Personally, I like to tilt my camera up just a few degrees. As far as placement, I like to put it just slightly behind me, giving me enough room for launch. And you can see just how nice it comes up into the air and starts flying. Most of the time, I get really good footage of my launches as well. Well, that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and consider subscribing. If you'd like to see some footage taken using this chase cam, head on over to my channel and check out the Nicholson Viaduct.